We continue our story today as Mary, with a heavy heart, bids farewell to her parents and joins a caravan heading south to Judea. Papa, please tell Joseph goodbye and tell him that I love him, she sighs. She can feel the tears building behind her eyes, but she swallows them down until they become like a rock in her chest. She knows she'll miss Joseph desperately, but she must get to Cousin Elizabeth, to someone who understands. As the rickety cart pulls out of Nazareth, it passes the town well where the women meet to fill their buckets with water and especially to share the latest gossip. Shalom, Mary, someone waves. Where are you going? I'm going to visit my cousin. She answers with a forced smile. What? One of the women blurts. Then waiting until Mary is out of earshot, she whispers, Mary is betrothed. She has no business leaving Joseph when she's supposed to be planning a wedding. Something must be wrong. Mary's stomach sickens, for she senses what they are saying. In fact, she knows she will be the brunt of many jokes and gossip. Indeed, great rejection and understanding lay ahead but she straightens her shoulders and looks up. Father, whatever dishonor I must endure, I thank you for the honor of carrying your son. As the cart rattles down the road, she lets her eyes sweep the Galilean pastures, dotted with white and yellow field lilies. As far as her eyes can see lay the olive groves and fruit orchards where lemon and orange blossoms fill the air with fragrance. She gazes on the hills and glens which once formed the backdrop of Solomon's song. To the west, she sees lovely Mount Carmel where Elijah called down fire from heaven. Beyond the western mountain stretches the great sea, shimmering beneath the noonday sun like a silver platter of light. At night, she shivers on the moist ground, wrapped in her shawl and a woolen cloak, feeling miserable and alone. This is her first time leaving home, and the hollow ache of loneliness engulfs her as she quietly cries herself to sleep. Each morning, her stomach wretches with nausea. For almost four grueling days, the sun beats mercilessly down upon her as the caravan plods toward the hill country. As they near Samaria, the caravan turns eastward crossing over the chilly waters of the Jordan at its shallowest point. No respectable Jew would contaminate himself by walking on Samaritan ground, so they follow the east banks of the Jordan until they cross back over the river into Jericho. Immediately after crossing the cold water, she sees in the distance the hills rising around Jerusalem. We're almost there, little one, shouts the leader of the caravan. We'll drop you off at your cousin's house in the village outside the city. Mary's blood runs faster now. She silently prays. Father, please let Elizabeth be pregnant, just as the angel told me. This amazing dream will seem more real when I see my barren cousin filled with the miracle of a child. But should I tell her right away that I too am with child? Oh, please let her understand. Don't let her reject me like the others. The evening sun slopes gently over the Judean hills as the caravan enters the village where Zachariah and his wife, Elizabeth, live. As they near the house, the clatter of hooves on the cobbles draws Elizabeth to the window. A warm breeze blows the curtain across her face as she squints her eyes to make out the visitor. 